welcome to our Professional Evil webcast, uh, where we talk about all sorts of different things. Uh, today, we have a very special topic, passwordless authentication. <laughs> yeah. Is it a term? Is it really here? We don't know. Is the world ready to ditch passwords, embrace I, biometrics, tokens? I actually laughed at the title of this one, Can Passwords Go Away? Go yes, away. they can. A better question is, will they? <laughs> yeah, well, fair enough. I, I, I think that's what we're finally going to come down to, right, is, is semantics and then who's ready to adopt. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I think the other, the other point that wasn't made here is that there's a date on this slide. Can passwords go away July 2023? The answer is no. <laughs> and let's be very clear, by the way, if your password is July 2023, it better change go away. It. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're ready to, uh, to you know, see you in a pen test and see what happens there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so before we dig into it further, uh, just in case you're not familiar who we have, first we have John Knepp. He's one of the senior security consultants here at Secure Ideas. Uh, master pen testing. He can hack into, I think, about any system these days, proven uh, a couple of weeks ago with, with a wonderful test. Uh, I think it's just his nice, mellow way of talking and a paperclip. He's like our MacGyver. And then anyway, he's Johnson. our MacGyver. I love it. He, he, yeah. Kevin Johnson, CEO. I think everybody here knows who he is. He, his, his, I'm, his I'm voice very sorry and about talks that. draw everyone to us. Uh, uh, and then there's myself. Uh, Eric Keen, one of the principal consultants. Uh, and, you know, believe it or not, I am a fan of the idea of passwordless authentication, having been in the Windows authentication and identity management with Active Directory for a long time. I, I am a fan, but I am going to fall back to win and everything as we talk about what we have. So the idea of passwordless authentication has been around for a while now. I think there is all sorts of different groups out there trying their own thing. Uh, you know, we, we have this idea right now. You have the option of one-time passcodes. We have Windows Hello and the Mac OS identity. I don't know what it, it's actually called. Is it it's, like called, a, it's called I. I? Okay, I. Uh, <laughs> you know, we have Fido. Sure, it's I. It's, it could be Mac, it could be Apple. I don't know. It's, uh, it's like they took the iPad, the iPhone, the iMac, and they're like, hey, identity, I. Yeah, or, or it could be id. I, I, know. I think they should go against the grain and just call it me. Me? There me. I like it. No, no, no. Because that brings up Windows me. Yeah. Oh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> Do you so, guys remember was... Windows Bob? Windows... Yes. <laughs> Windows My Bob. favorite authentication system was Windows Bob because it would actually error out and say to you, you've mistyped your password three times. Would you like to change it? <laughs> yeah. Of course I want to. Uh... Yeah. All right. Well, with all of these things, I mean, my first question to get everybody on the same page. What do you I know what your first question is. Your first question is, is everybody as bothered as Kevin is by the fact that opaque becomes not opaque? Yeah, I know. Logo? Yeah, that's actually <laughs> that is your logo. Uh, like yeah. Opposite of what it should be. <laughs> it, it's clear, but opaque. Yes. I, I don't know. Yeah. You're right. It should be O and the P should be the, the light blue. And then it yeah, could, yeah. yeah. Well, we, we can send that to them and see what they have to say. Okay, that probably isn't the first question. <laughs> okay, no. From my perspective, though, uh, you know, with SSO and everything else like that, is that a form of passwordless authentication? I know I lean towards a direction, but I'm curious what you two had to say before I jump in. So I, I think the, the first idea, before we can get to that, is to okay. really discuss whether or not we all agree. I think that's a good first question. But I think to answer that question, we have to discuss what passwordless means, mm -hmm. right? And, and the reason I say that is I, it's a marketing term in so many places, right? Like we now implement passwordless authentication. Really, how do I set that up? Well, first you set a password and then, <laughs> right? Like, I, I, so I, to me... And, and I've read up and I've looked, I've studied, I've tested, I've done all these kinds of different things. I've actually looked at implementing passwordless systems. In almost every case that I've seen, passwordless basically means a way to authenticate that uses something you have or something you are instead of something you know, right? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if that's a fair way to put it, but, but that's the easiest way I've been to, to come up with an answer to what it means. Right. And so 
to me, single sign-on is not by itself mm -hmm. a passwordless solution. But I would argue that the most common way to implement a passwordless solution is to leverage some form of single sign-on, right? Yeah. And the single sign-on system supports passwordless authentication. But by itself, in my brain, which we all know I'm not that smart, but in my brain, single sign-on by itself is not passwordless. Okay. John, do you, do, do, what part of what I said do you disagree with? <laughs> you're already, right? I'm very transparent, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, I could tell by the look at your face like, what was that guy smoking is what was coming out. And I'm just going to point out, you're the guy that used to live in Denver. And, um, oh, well. This is getting uh, now a little below the belt. A little below the belt. Personal, How is that below the belt? Okay. My, is Denver <laughs> south of Utah? Kind of. <laughs> okay, mean, south of Salt Lake City, right? Uh, that's, that's valid. <laughs> yes. Um, but it's usually an east-west discussion, not so much a north-south. That's, I'm not good at geography. That, well, no, we're, so we're which, not, that's which, not the topic. The topic is good. passwords. So, because I would fail at that topic. So, I, what is, I, I would say what is that, your opinion? I would say, uh, you know, I, I feel like SSO would in, in the, the uh, aspect that you're not that. Only the exchange between the user and the SSO provider to get that token is using an exchange of that secret, that prearranged yeah. secret, right? Yeah. And I and I'm gonna call it a prearranged secret because password distinguish the password from say a pass key as or you know a something that's a challenge and response where you're not exchanging the prearranged secret in that case you're exchanging you're you're essentially signing a challenge in a way that only you could sign it that that's not a password in my mind okay so my then, you, sso there's you, you've essentially been given a a token a, you know a claim that can be validated by the application the endpoint against the authority to say is this valid Yes, there's not a password per se at that point. So okay, that. so there, there, there begins the the beginning of my semantic and why I I always worried about when we say passwordless authentication. Yeah, because I, I agree. In your mind, you're you're saying all right, a password is text that's hashed. Hopefully, it's hashed. Please let it be hashed. Going from your client to a system, matching a hash over there and saying yes or no, a Password in your mind is not something that I use to unlock my smart card or a pin that I include with some information somewhere else. That is not a password in your mind. I mean, I suppose the point you're going to make is that if you have that secret, you know, from the from the SSO provider, there ha and you don't have any other thing other than that secret to validate, then you know, that secret's effectively a password. Or that well, should say that. Well, that let's use yes. Windows. Let's use Windows authentication, right? I set up my machine, I yep. set a password on my account. And then it asks me to set up a pin. Yep. Which my understanding of Microsoft's documentation is they treat that pin as passwordless authentication. Yep. Because I'm not typing in the password, I'm typing in the pin. Which Correct. that then immediately debunks my definition because a, pa a pin is something I know. And, and it's that's just not, why I've not a into, password. Exactly. So we get this interesting. So if we go with that is the difference, then clearly if people have set up Windows Hello and they're using Azure in their authentication space, we have passwordless authentication. But in my mind, we don't. Because unless you set up something else, you, you've turned on the camera, the face recognition. Yeah. Or you have a like, something else. And like we talked about last week, I don't use facial recognition on my systems because I have a unique attack surface, uh, risk actor. I don't know what you want to mangle CISP words together, right? If that I'm an identical twin. So right. if I use really curious, 
Yeah. Sorry. Keep going. I'm no, sorry. It's, I, no, what are you curious about? I'm curious if we could get your brother next to you and we turn it on. I want to know if it could tell the difference. Yeah. I've always had this, this thought, right? Because I look at my twins, Natalie and Lex, and I can go bang, bang, no problem. Even before they had different haircuts. Always. Right. But anybody else who sees them, they're like, I don't know who's who. You guys look identical to me. Well, that's an easy task. Turn on facial recognition on their phone and see what happens. See if it opens up for each of them. I don't know. My brother lives elsewhere. So mm -hmm. we've, I've never tested this. But back when uh, still photo would work, I did do that. Mm -hmm. I would love to see, and it, you know, I don't know if either of you use like the Google Photos piece or any other uh, kind of those photo storage technology that oh. does facial yes. recognition. Can it tell the difference? No. Google Photos absolutely says to me, is this you? And yeah. adds yeah. my brother's pictures to that collection. Now, yeah. that's not a great example because they it's necessarily broader because it has to allow for the, the change in your facial... But Potential but facial recognition has to be well, because if I was to grow a mustache or Eric was to shave, right? Which I'm not allowed to do. You told me that. When I take my glasses off, I told you, you were not. You Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I think these are interesting tests, and it all depends on. And on that's the system. I'm, I'm curious about Windows Hello, yeah. especially because Android phones and, and, and iOS devices are not necessarily tagged as being your enterprise grade facial recognition software, while Windows Hello is there to allow people to use it in an enterprise for authentication. So I'm, I'm curious. So, all right, we're, 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 we're stuck on that term, but I, should, I guess we should pull us back a little bit here then. And so in your mind, what are the core components? And have we ever covered what the core components of passwordless authentication would be? What do we need to make this work first up? To me, you need to have some way to enroll the user. Mm -hmm. You have to have some way that during that enrollment, they provide whatever the token is that they're going to use, whether it's a, a YubiKey, their face, a thumbprint, uh, my voice is my password, whatever, right? Or a PIN. And then that has to be set up. Once that enrollment is done, then there has to be some technological connection between that and what we're authorizing against, mm -hmm. right? So like if, if I'm on a web app and I choose to use YubiKey to authenticate into my, my web app instead of, then my system has to have some way to validate that YubiKey and then verify the authorization, right? So we still have a authorization data store, right? Whether or not the user's allowed, like it's Kevin, is he an admin? Is he a regular user? Does he mm -hmm. have the ability to edit other users? That kind of stuff. Um, and at, in a nutshell, those are the things I think we, we need. So I, I think it's worth kind of at least for the audience's benefit, maybe mm -hmm. talking about some of the components. Um, FIDO2 is one of the kind of emerging standards and standards are going to be important, right? If we're going to do away with passwords, we have to get all these various companies, these adopters out there to, to implement the same solution. And it's going to require some cooperation, right? With a password, you can implement that kind of in a standalone way. You can, don't do this, uh, roll your own. <laughs> I like how he whispered it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, that's just going back to John being able to pen test anything there, right? He, oh, he put verbal parentheses around that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a skill. I, it was. I... <laughs> so, um, damn, I derailed myself. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Come back, come back. But, you know, you're going to need parts of the ecosystem. Um, for instance, and, and where FIDO2 is, is kind of, sort of making its inroads most. I mean, I will give it to Eric um, that enterprise is going to be tricky. Yeah. But on the web front, uh, the FIDO2 standard and web uh, there's there's some components there that are really starting to make headways. You've got the browsers, uh, including support for it, various libraries that are kind of built into it. So you've got the browser kind of providers or the browser uh, development companies buying in and adopting 
uh, you've got the very, you know, the big companies out there like um, Okta, you know, the, the, the identity providers out there uh, getting on board. Uh, there's implementations and, and, and libraries that are available out there to help facilitate it on the server side, the development side. So, oh, and then, then of course, you've got the device developers, Android, iOS, uh, Windows, you know, they're building in the these components, the authenticator side. Um, um, that kind of takes me to that component of language. So there's there's three components here that I've talked about. The, there's the side where the user sits. Um, that's what they refer to as the authenticator. So whether it's your Windows Hello or your Android um, device or iOS device that you're using your pin or your face or whatever other biometric thumbprint to unlock, that's your authenticator. That's your store where you're keeping your public key, private key pairs. And, and then the other side is the relying party. That's what you're authenticating to um, and it's requiring you to authenticate. And then in between is the, the client and that's your web browser in, in most cases. So those components, um, it, what gets exchanged between them isn't a password per se, it's uh, a, a, a challenge where the endpoint that you've registered with, and this, is, gets the, this goes to what Kevin was saying, where there's kind of weakness in the scalability problem, that endpoint is challenging the user uh, with a value. The user then takes their public key or their private key, signs that challenge with it and sends it back to the relying party that's trying to authenticate them. And then the relying party uses their previously shared public key to validate decrypted and validate that indeed that was the person they expected that uh, had signed that challenge. So that that seems really secure, but the problem really is, um, you know, you, you guys are arguing that you still have a password or something like it that you're using to unlock the authenticator on the you, client. You may still have a password. May. Yes. And, and I'll give you an example of a case that doesn't. Um, uh, in preparation to this, and because I like to do this, one of the things I've done quite often uh, is I read a lot. And one of the things I really like to read is documentation. Um, I'll also admit I read AUPs, uh, except if we use policies um, and terms and conditions on click through websites. Um, it's always funny when you read those because they suck. But one of the things I've read a lot about is some of the tutorials on how to in, to implement passwordless authentication in your app. And many, I'm not going to say most, even though I feel like most might actually count, but many of them, if you if you take out, I'm a provider of passwordless authentication systems, and this is the documentation I'm using in my system. Right. If you take those out, if you're reading the uh, Joe Schmo or, you know, uh, Jennifer Johnson wrote their own blog about how to do this because they did it. The vast majority of them are tied to email. Yeah, they do the Slack model where. They send you an email, you click the link, and you're authenticated into the system. The one-time right? passcode methodology. Yeah. It's yeah. like, okay, I'm going to let you in right now. And those don't require a password. Many of them have one. I use Slack as the example. And Slack, I absolutely have a Slack password to the workspace. Yeah. And I have the ability to, hey, I got, like, I got a new machine, I don't know, a couple months ago. And when I got the new machine, when I needed to authenticate to the, you know, I don't know, eight different Slack workspaces I'm in or whatever. I went, gave them my email address. They sent me a link. I clicked the link. Now, I do want to point out, I thought this was interesting. It, I was reminded of it recently, and I thought it was interesting, is that so in the workspaces I have, I have a few uh, workspaces that for one reason or another, I have multi-factor authentication on. As a matter of mm -hmm. fact, I believe it's almost all of them. Um, it logged me in via my email, 
but would not, not let me access the workspace until I entered the authentication token. So I yep. still had to use the two-factor token, which I thought was interesting, right? And I, I thought it did a, a, an interest, a decent job of, hey, by the way, you're in, you're authenticated, your client now has all of the, the tabs or whatever, but you don't actually have access to this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Um, I, I will acknowledge that I don't have two-factor authentication on the, uh, the tested uh, Slack workspace or whatever it is, or, you know, the, the throwaway ones. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that's an interesting question in a way, right? So uh, we're, we're talking about passwordless authentication, right? So what, what, the, what is the attack vector we're trying to stop? by implementing this, right? Going back to that first part, what is the, the, well, the issue we're trying to stop other than password well, stuff? That, that's actually pretty simple, credential stuffing, right? Credential stuffing. Um, if I have a password here, I very likely use it somewhere else, yep. right? Um, password use is, is ridiculous. I, I, I mean, I went, I went to, uh, we, you know, tangent we we offer dark web monitoring to our clients and i actually went into the dark web monitoring system and searched for i was dealing with a, a person that wanted a pen test and i thought it'd be interesting i typed their domain name in and they had one user that had used the same password it was it was in like 57 breach lists and it was like that's ridiculous and it's the same password used here, 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 here. Now, when that customer hires us to do a pen test, one of the first things I'm going to do is try to log in with that account yep. on their corporate network or on the application we're testing or whatever it is that we're doing for them. And that is the problem we're, we're trying to solve with passwordless is let's fix that. The other problem is convenience to the users. Uh, and, and this one always irritates me because password safe sort of thing. But um, a lot of the documentation, a lot of the people talking or selling password lists, they talk about how your users are having trouble remembering passwords. And I, that's a dumb reason in my mind to go to password lists. Like you can't remember a password. That's what password safes are for. Um, well, and, and I, I agree for a different reason, which is okay. my parents. I'm going to use my parents as my, my go-to here. I... For years, we're talking talked about MFA and all right, all this and everything, and you need to use it here. I set it up, we got it going, and now yeah. I'm going to say you need a Yubi key instead. Yeah, I mean, no, the, my parents are my. You finally got. I love this. my mother. I love my mother. She has the ability to break anything electronic by getting too close to it. So I see the need <laughs> of a Yubi key, and it's not going to work. And then I get this other problem of how do I fix that then? Right. So I've gone through my mom somehow managed to have her YubiKey work for three days and she changed all of her passwords and every app that she uses to use this YubiKey. And now it breaks or she loses it or somebody takes it. Right. right. The benefit to the password in my mind is it's easy to change if there's a problem. Right. I mean, what is it? What what how do we help people that have a problem with their device? So interestingly enough, when I was. I don't think we've mentioned it yet since we went live. Mm -hmm. um, the webinar that I did back in at the end of January on passwordless authentication, kind of where are we at with that? How, mm -hmm. how does it work? How is it implemented? Um, I went into it. I have Yubi keys. I use them. Um, and I went into it with that aspect of it. What I discovered going into it is that there's also other, you know, you can use devices as mm -hmm. your authenticator, right? YubiKey is the one we think of because it's really custom built for that. Uh, but your phone and even the browsers now support this with Bluetooth enabled on both your computer that you're using your browser on and on your phone, you can use your or your, your phone as your authenticator it will, the, the browser will actually trigger a Bluetooth communication to your phone to get that to be used as your authenticator. So there are ways that maybe will be a little easier for the users to accept. Um, we all have 
become reliant on our phones, let's let's get more reliant on our phones. Why don't we? <laughs> uh, I have no problem with that whatsoever. There you go. But then you, we've got a different challenge, um, which is, well, what happens when you change phones? Because one of the things that if and, and if anybody's out there using YubiKey and uh, with especially for FIDO and passwordless, uh, FIDO2, sorry, and, and passwordless, if you're only using, if you only have one YubiKey and you're only using that one YubiKey, um, you're probably setting yourself up for failure if you ever lose that thing, at least register, register two. Um, yes, so you but- you put one in a safe. That is true. I would agree. You should always have two, yeah. but not all systems will let you register two. That is true. And I have not yet found an application that doesn't say to me, oh, you don't have your YubiKey. Would you like to try one of your other mechanisms to authenticate? Yep. Right? So, like, I regularly uh, sign in my Google account. If I don't have my YubiKey with me, I switch to my MFA token. And it lets me in just the same. So what we're really talking about here is the the biggest barrier to moving away from passwords to password authenticate or to password list is that that getting user buy-in right that user experience has to be something that people are willing to move toward i mean that's really our biggest challenge towards more secure passwords uh, in general and password hygiene is that user experience barrier right so we've got to solve that one way or another yeah in i'll be blunt and I've said this before, passwords will go away as soon as mainframes do. Um, <laughs> and they still require eight character passwords, by the way. No, and they <laughs> don't. <laughs> oh, oh, come on, yeah. the number of times we get, we get to talk to a client, and they're like, what's your password policy? Eight characters. Why? Well, because, no, that's the, the mainframe. Yeah, RACF is... doesn't support anything past eight characters. <laughs> no, that's not true. It is not 1873. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, but... But that's, again, back to the user experience, because there is nothing to say yes. that you have to have that password that users are using for Active Directory be synced with right. that mainframe. It's uh, user but, convenience that, that that's being linked to there. But that's, we should be looking at user convenience. See, Absolutely. this to me, this, uh, and I know you know this. I, I know you're not disagreeing with this. I, I, to me, one of the problems with the push to password lists is that it's being pushed by the ivory tower infosec community and marketers instead of saying how do we solve the actual problem users have and in my head and i'm not saying password list doesn't fix this but in my head there are a few things pat users are complaining about one passwords are complex well when you dig into that and you say okay why is it complex it's not because passwords are complex. It's because your notification, your error message when they try to change their password sucks. And I like the number of times I've tried to set a password and it, and, I, and I'm using their rules that they document to me in my password safe password generator. And then it errors out and says, nope, can't accept that password. Can't accept that password. Can't accept that. Oh, there's three other rules you didn't mention. Like, can't start with a special character or can't start with a number or whatever. No spaces. Yeah, no well, spaces. By the way, everybody, passwords are a spaces are a special that's character. A character. It's a character. I know. Yeah. Right. God, it irritates me. But, but so the problem is users have problems with passwords. It's not the problem pe people have trouble remembering passwords. It's you've made them so complex for them to set them that it's hard for them to remember them. Second problem. Uh, we have password reuse. Okay. You know what? If we pushed easier ways to do MFA, we wouldn't have a problem with password reuse because they'd still have to get past the MFA. Right. I, I'm not saying it solves everything. I'm saying we have to think about how the users are using it. It right? reduces it. Yeah. It doesn't solve the problem, but it reduces the threat. Reduces the risk. The risk. I personally believe that many of the passwordless solutions actually make things easier for the user. And in those cases, that's good. But what I have seen time and time again is that systems being deployed make passwordless authentication harder for the user to use. 
right? And that's why I say is let's instead of focusing, and I know neither of you are, are saying we need to do this, I, but instead of focusing on, hey, we want to make sure that we push out this new technology, how about we look at what people are trying to do? Right. Because I'll tell you, I just recorded this morning. We recorded the shared security podcast. Tom and Scott and I were talking. And one of the topics was there was this conversation on Reddit. And we all know all conversations on Reddit are reasonable. And it was talking about how in Europe and I've never been to Europe. I'm a, a dumb American. So let's just go with it. Um, but that many places in Europe, healthcare and banking now are requiring a Google or a Microsoft account to log in, right? And so people are running into problems because their bank has moved to this single sign-on passwordless system that's been they've been convinced to use, and the end user doesn't have access to it because they don't have a smartphone or they don't have a Microsoft account or they don't want a Google account or you know what they don't want Google to have access to their medical records, um, right? And so we're pushing this password list thing without paying attention to the secondary ramifications of it, right? What is it? The unintended consequences. Yeah. So the unintended consequence of pushing a single sign-on password system based on Microsoft is that Microsoft becomes an even bigger monopoly than Europe doesn't want them to be, right? Um, how do you handle that? How do you resolve that? And, and the, in my mind, the re resolution is not Tell every Joe Schmo developer to build their own passwordless system. <laughs> I there's so many things I want to unpack here. I know. <laughs> um, Pick one. I think the first thing I want to say is, look, we're getting into that that um, kind of the trade offs, the pro, the 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 benefit of of standards, right? You talk about everybody struggling with the complexity of, of passwords and dealing with, you know, that password prompt is so confusing and it's such a pain. Okay, great. Why is that? Because you've got different password, like the process for resetting your password, for enrolling, for, um, you know, what your password standards are very, very across every single system. How do you how do you solve some of that? Well, that's where SSO would come in, right? SSO is going to solve that problem for us. Then we're then we're centralizing. We're getting to the the concept of that centralized identity provider, which is where Microsoft comes in. in, in your example, right? But our trade off there is now how do we control the privacy of what information is being exchanged and and who we're who we're having transactions with that that authentication is kind of a, exposing our activities and who we're, we're authenticating with to that centralized identity provider. There's privacy concerns there. Of course, you also were talking about Europe. Um, they've got their GPDR, right? Yep. GDPR, yeah. GDPR. GDPR. Alphabet soup, damn it. Yes. So, I mean, how much do you trust that that's going to protect you? That's not a foolproof solution. I was reading the other day about, well, what's the alternative? How do we get away from that centralized identity provider? And then I started discovering a bit more about decentralized identity, uh, the the evolution towards, or at least that, that kind of um, research and development towards the decentralized model, which takes advantage of blockchain. Very interesting topic, but oh my gosh, the can of worms that opens up and we are so far away from that with, of course, the resistance to the fact that, you know, the funding is really there, you know, there, there's that marketability of your private information with Google and, uh, you know, all those others that can Facebook, whatever, uh, they, they're resisting that change because they're mon they've monetized that uh, information that you're afraid of giving up the privacy concerns, rightly so. So how do we get to that model where the user is in control of what data gets shared with who and you know, controlling their identity? Uh, but standards really, I mean, I, I'm gonna just throw back to that. Standards make things easier for everybody. Yeah, I think standards help. I think that, I, I think the biggest important thing to keep in mind is that as you're rolling this kind of stuff out, you want to keep in mind one, what your goal is 
and two, how you ensure you you understand the unintended consequences and the risks that you open yourself up to, right? I I and and I, I find it funny. I personally, I don't think passwords are going to go away in any way anytime soon, if ever. And, and right? I'm, I agree. And I'm not counting the pin as a password. I, I'm I'm using John's definition of a password. I agree. I don't think yeah. that's going away anytime no. for a very long time. And, and I will even rule out, let's ignore those sites that just aren't going to upgrade because we don't care. Right. Um, I I belong to a web forum called the International Association of Pen Turners or like whatever it is. Right. And they have a web forum that I log into and I, I read up about new ways to make pens and techniques and tricks and stuff like that. Because for the people who don't know, I make pens. They're not great, but I like them. And uh, that site is always going to have a password. <laughs> <laughs> like it's a, it's a volunteer group. Nobody pays like, like they, they take donations to, to keep the server up and running. Nobody's upgrading this system. Nobody is maintaining the system to roll out new tech. I'm not saying they're not patching. I'm not saying that, but they're not going to roll out an implementation of YubiKey key setup and things like that anytime soon. Um, and bluntly, I don't think they have to. Yeah. But if well, we and, ignore those sites, my bank account is going to accept a password for years. Well, and so agreed. And I think that's, in, in my mind, you, you just hit upon a topic that is, is very interesting and kind of narrows the focus a bit too, which is the people that this is being marketed to is who needs to do it is not all of the websites in the world. No. It is all of the enterprises in the world, all of the commercial groups that have their systems out there. And most of these are the people who are going to have the hardest time adopting this solution. Well, and, and the, okay, let's, let's focus on just them. Can they adopt it? And the reason I say that is, okay, they can do it. Like, yeah, okay, Microsoft has this cool tutorial on how to do it in documentation and they're going to, they're going to help you with that uplift, mm -hmm. right? Um, how many organizations do you know only use enterprise class applications for right. their business? Right. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I, we were working with a hospital and one of the ways we got into the hospital was this application for nurse scheduling. And it was written by one of the nurses and she she sat down one day and I guess had taken some classes or whatever and was interested in like didn't want to stop being a nurse but but wanted to to help make her job easier and she came up with this scheduling system and this became a core system that they were using to manage who was the on call who was the floor you know all this kind of stuff people could you got your schedule out of the system you could request like. I need this shift, not that shift. You could like, like all this, it was actually a pretty cool system, but it was built by this one person for this one system. And then the nurse publishes open source. And now you have these other hospitals running the same system that was run by, and this is a mission critical system, right? Mm -hmm. Knowing which nurses are on the, that's important. That system's not gonna be passwordless. That system is right. Like, so even the enterprises come up with stuff, right? I mean, Basecamp. <laughs> Quick, let's send the notification with sound. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, well, and, and it's not just those other applications. I mean, trying to get, heck, even within an enterprise, trying to get all of your applications to use Active Directory or Google or whatever you're using as your store, right? To all be able to jump to it automatically is very, it, it's not easy. Typically, that's one of the things we exploit. We thought we put it in securely. Oh, no, we forgot yep. something, right? Because I, we didn't do this. We didn't do yeah. this one step that encrypts this thing somehow. And now we got a problem, right? I mean, like, you know, the CEO of the company running his laptop for months without encrypting the drive. Right. Uh, I don't know where that happened. I don't know what you're talking about. 
Um, <laughs> it wasn't months. It, if I remember correctly, it was just a month. Was yeah, maybe, I'll go maybe one and a half, but yeah, somewhere in there. Might have been two. Yeah, For people yeah. don't know, I bought, I got a new computer. It's not this one. And like a month or two after I got it, Eric said to me, hey, Kevin, your drive's not encrypted. And I said to him, of course it is. I, why would you ask? It wasn't. <laughs> and um, luckily, I had not, I don't believe I had done any pen tests in that period of time. No. But oh man, it was bad. I probably shouldn't admit that on a recording. Oh, yeah. but, oh well. <laughs> that's, that's going to be one <laughs> knows where. Uh, Kevin yeah. always has an encrypted drive. Always. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, okay, I'm going to ask how many of you all, and I'm talking to the audience. <laughs> How many of you all have implemented or are implementing passwordless solutions in your enterprise? Well, right. We'll start with what might be one of the easiest to adopt if you're using Microsoft, which would be Windows Hello. Because can't you in the, the control system tell it you're not allowing Windows Hello? Yes. Like Entune, I want to say, right? Yeah, or, or other systems, yes. It, it, to use Windows Hello... And an enterprise requires you have certain things. Okay. I, I want to ask one thing because the answer we just got was we are just getting rid of passwords. That implies <laughs> that you're just, there's well, no authentication. You just log I'm Kevin. in. I got, I'm, I'm Kevin. Kevin. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that's no. not what you mean. <laughs> no, no, no. That's what he means. <laughs> we don't need auth. We just, we just have identities. It's all great. What is this? It, some Mickey Mouse organization? It's, it's the no. opposite of zero trust. It's full trust. Yeah, yeah full trust. <laughs> Implicit you trust. You must be who you say you are. <laughs> that's right. Trust all. Uh, well, Giovanni, is Would you like to change your password? You're having problems entering your password? <laughs> 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 I do want to say, Eric, or, I don't know who it was that used the... the, the mentioned me as like the paper clip. I don't know what that meant, but I immediately flashed my head to the office Clippy, Clippy. tapping on your screen saying, hey, I noticed. I think I think Clippy needs to come back now that we have chat GPT built into Bing. I really do oh think my God, that I, I'm okay with that. I, I, I never understood why everybody was mad at Clippy. <laughs> You could I click the it. button and turn them off. I like it. Like it was like he could go away. I always um, thought it was hilarious that it would tap on your screen and it sounded like somebody tapping from the inside of your glass CRT. Yeah. I, my favorite, I think, was people who ran. What was it? Bonsai Buddy or Bonzo Buddy? Little gorilla guy, or you could oh, change right, him into right, a wizard. Right, yeah, and, there was a dog, a gorilla. The and, no, 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 no. This was a separate add-on. Oh. It was malware, and um. <laughs> I think it was malware. I just to be clear. Like I'm gonna admit to that, Kevin. I know, like I'm not talking about it. No, with the paperclip, you could turn it into the dog or the wizard yeah. Oh, yeah. or whatever, but yeah. there was this other one that you could install. Trust third know. party locations always download and install software from third party locations. Yes, always. Right. Yeah, I don't I I think you're right that on the Windows Hello side, that's going to be adopted relatively faster across the systems. And then on intranet sites, that means that Windows Hello will be supported because, of course, right, mm -hmm. many intranet sites are using that integrated authentication with, with NPLM. Bonsai Buddy! Thank you, Wes. <laughs> um, I wonder, am I right? It was malware, right? I don't know. Do you trust that site? No. <laughs> I, well, it's Wikipedia. Anybody can edit it. I have. And um... adware. Everything is adware. Come on. Adware, yes. Nobody yes. would have any software on their computer back then if it wasn't adware. So oh, I like this. Spyish wear. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So... I, I think what I was saying was I think that you're going to see a rollout of Hello. Hello is going to move into the integrated intranet sites the, automatically, right? And then what I expect is to start seeing that tied to whatever Azure's new Azure AD name is. Intra. Intra, right? So you're going to start seeing that. And once that starts happening, I think from an enterprise perspective, we're going to see a better option for passwordless, right? That, that it's going to be more. But I don't, I don't, I don't see any time soon, even close to many of the applications 
completely switching over and only allowing passwordless. I think we're going to see for quite a while, I'm talking a decade, where passwordless will be an option. But you'll get the same, like I said, with with the with my Google account, right? I, I don't have my YubiKey, so it says to me, would you like to use one of your other means of authentication? I think that's going to be there for 10 years or more. Yeah. Well, and, so and that's my opinion. A, a part of that in my mind is how difficult it is to set up. I'll stick to Windows Hello, but yeah. the others, Google and others have the same problem, right? So Windows Hello at least gives me three options depending what's on my laptop. Easy, right? So we can use yeah. the face, we can use the thumbprint, we can use a pin. If you wanted to go down the third party device, like a UV key or, or other potential system on your phone, whatever it might be, the administrator has to manually register the, the token, the device. There's no, I'm opting into this, let me do that. That's going to just automatically make that impossible for a large organization to use, right? Um, or realistically to use, because I'd, I'd hate to be the poor guy who's trying to enter in all those serial numbers or whatever it is as the identifier and, and hope not to break it or get it wrong or who knows what. Yeah. But then on top of that, all right, we, we rolled out Windows Hello. That's great for my normal user account. But how about my privileged access to everything? We're, we're, there, there's no control for that yet in any way, shape, or form, um, really. So, uh, you know, I, I still see where the security community is pushing this idea to enterprises, but there's no way for an enterprise to roll it out in any meaningful way still to allow it yeah. to be adopted. I, I think we have that circular problem, right? So that that's why I go back to, I think we're going to have passwords forever, even though I'd yeah. like them to go away. Um, right. Because I, I do recognize the challenges that we've, we've turned passwords into. Um, but yeah. I, I, I don't know. I mean, John, what do you, what do you think? Do you think we're, we're going to get there that, you, you know, quick so Microsoft and, and even Apple are participating in some of these consortiums. They understand yeah. what the challenge is. I mean, we're not the only smart people out there. Um, and I'm and not even that smart. I was going to say, I'm not, yeah. I, I want to bat out of that one, but okay. We're not that smart. We know that there are smart people working <laughs> at these organizations. Now, as long as the, the, as long as the initiative aligns with their financial um, goals, right, then they'll work towards these solutions. Uh, I, I came across Microsoft's Ion. Microsoft has a project, Ion, um, that looks like it's working towards that decentralized identity. There's some other initiatives they've been working on. Um, I can't remember exactly the term, but essentially it was linked into Azure Active Directory, and it was sort of this, uh, the kind of uh, authentication token that didn't expose customer information. So they are working toward some of these challenges. And you know they're working toward it in kind of the internet space. They're also working towards how can we implement this in the enterprise. So I don't think we necessarily have to feel like we're never going to get there because I think they're on board with the idea. Um, they'll be working toward it. But again, it's going to be that iterative process. And I think um, I want to point out with YubiKey, I can't remember exactly where I saw it, but I think they've actually acknowledged that from a FIDO, from a passwordless perspective, they're meant as a bridge. Their device, they don't anticipate that's yeah. the long-term solution. Yes, right? that they're, is true. They're, they're waiting for our devices, the, the things we're using every day, to have that technology incorporated into them, to have all of our laptops have that, uh, oh my gosh, whatever that hardware Now I'm now I'm drawing a blank. The TPM? The, the TPM? That, I'm sorry. The TPM is that what you're? Yes, the about? TPM. Okay. That that effectively that component built into it, so that there's that that secure space on on the device for storage of those secrets. Okay. So, in in our last couple minutes, I want to loop back to one thing that I'm going to say because we all agreed that the thing that is going to hamper this from being rolled out is user participation. That's the biggest problem, user adoption. Yes, yes. So how are you going to explain to a user that you don't have a password anymore, you just have a pin? I don't think that is ever going to be, I don't think that is going to make sense to them and therefore we haven't gotten rid of passwords ever. 
I think the way they're going to explain it by stop allowing pins and Altogether, push more and more to biometrics. Have to be biometric. Yeah. And I don't like that from a privacy concern, right? I, the biometric idea concerns me from but that if, aspect. But if the biometrics are only local to the device, does so, that concern you? Uh, yes, absolutely. Because it's, it's, Basically, the local TPM on your device is what Yep. You know, the device gets enrolled. That I'll doesn't just, require that your face be enrolled. I'll, I'll say two things. One, endpoint malware. Two, warrantless searches. <laughs> Let me just hold this up to your face for a second. Yeah, we. I mean, I just, I, I'm, I, I, all I'm saying is there is an elevated privacy risk if we were using, using biometrics. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying it's the evil, we're all gonna die. I am concerned about a move to strictly biometrics as an authentication mechanism. So, cool. All right, well, gentlemen, thank you for your time talking about this. I don't know if we answered everybody's question, but I, like I said, I see passwords being here for a very, very, very long time. And I will say, if if you have any questions or any feedback, please reach out to us. We're always around Slack workspaces, we're yep. email, Twitter, Blue Sky, Mastodon, random social media site of the day. It, and if you are starting your journey, let you know, let us know. We, you know, I I'd definitely be interested in chatting about it. Yeah. So, so. Well, cool. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.